there are times that I absolutely hate watching shows on a week-to-week basis, and this is definitely one of them. Episode 8 of Demon Slayer, the Entertainment District arc, left on a really nasty cliffhanger. I don't really think it's as close as it's kind of making it out to be. I really don't think this will be that simple. I mean, technically, I think the, the big hang-up point is really that we didn't really get to see Inosuke and Zenitsu really kind of getting a handle on Daki, and... As we've kind of already established, it seems like both of them have to be beheaded at the same time. And so I can see Gyotaro getting beheaded, but again, I don't see Daki getting beheaded. So I think it's going to be that one time where he loses his head and she doesn't. And so it's going to continue on. Now, the title leads something to be believed with the next episode, but I'm going to leave that (laughs) for, for those that actually want to check it out. But yeah, really fantastic episode. Not enough action that I would hope for. There was a lot of inner dialogue happening, and there was times where I was like, just get on with it already. (laughs) Like, we really don't need mid-battle backstories. I I always kind of hate that kind of stuff, and it it really felt like Tengen, especially, with his whole backstory, it was like, it felt very out of place. I felt like this is something that should have been established before the fight, (laughs) but... The whole idea, I guess, is just Yotaro mentioned the idea of Tengen being, you know, blessed. He's got all these wives. He's good looking. He's he's obviously talented. And Tengen's pretty much establishing, no, I that was never the case for me. I was in this family of Shinobi. Um, mentions the idea that most of all his family was wiped out. Him and his brother was rigorously trained. And it doesn't seem like he takes things for granted. It, it, it really does feel like he has gone through a lot of stuff. He's had to have a lot of really tough times in his history building up. So, but it also establishes the idea that his brother was like this really strict shinobi that was like his father, whereas he, and I guess it's really establishing why he is the way he is. He really does care for the lives of his wives. He cares for the lives of his subordinates. He never wants to be like his father or his brother. So it was, it was nice to establish that. It's just, like I said, really kind of felt out of place. It felt very rushed to be kind of shoved in there in the middle of nowhere, but it was still fine. But it is also trying to hint at this idea that he is not affected by Gyotaro's poison, despite the fact that it obviously looks like he's affected by his poison. It seems like he's putting on a front uh, so that Gyotaro doesn't believe that he's weakened, even though, again, he's technically weakened. It showed, it showed uh, Hinatsuru, finally. I I don't really, I don't think they showed her before this. (laughs) It seemed like she was just kind of I think she might have been, that's right, I think she was one of the um, the girls that he'd found at some point and he was giving her a remedy because it did look like she was poisoned as well. She wasn't doing well. It finally arrived there. I was kind of like a little bit bummed the idea that it seems like despite the fact that it makes it out as if his wives are kind of an extension of him, they're not really helping him. <laughs> They helped, you know, Zenitsu and Nosuke when they first were released, but then they're now just doing this whole kind of shuffling people out. But Hinatsuru, again, despite the fact that she was down and out for the count, she still struggled to get to the battlefield to assist, which, again, I guess I wonder where the heck did she get that big O thing of kunai? <laughs> just like, I don't know, where there's this big O kunai launching device that she just pulls out of her pocket or maybe somewhere else i don't know again we're getting a little bit of insight into gyotaro and daki again like i said before it it's a habit of this series to really kind of make you feel sorry for these individuals and in this particular episode they are talking in sync about this idea of people uh getting revenge essentially like everybody that's wronged them anybody that falsely accuses them they get their revenge and the way they do that is to only, uh, to get better, I guess, payback, they go for the blessed. So anybody that's in a good state, the only the beautiful and whatnot, that's what they're after. So that kind of indicates of why Daki was so, I guess, obsessed with going after very beautiful people, people that were in higher status in this area, was because those are the people that would, I guess, get her revenge better. If she can take out, be- she only cares about suffering beautiful people because she was trying to get revenge for the things that they've suffered before. They also mentioned the idea that apparently they've killed 22 Hashiras, which, I don't know, I, I guess that goes back to me not really understanding fully the whole system. I think they, they established before, like, all the people that were in this meeting um, where they were first going to execute Nezuko, all these very flashy-looking people were all, I guess, the highest status of Hashiras. So it kind of, it, it, it kind of indicates that there was other Hashiras. Because, I mean, you have 22 of these Hashiras that they've killed... That obviously we haven't seen makes me think that just the people that were in that meeting weren't all the Hashiras. There's actually a lot of them around the world. And again, he's killed 15 and his sister's killed seven, which I wonder if he'll play in the coming episodes because it seems like at least with them, they're doing a really good job of taking out the Hashiras, 
which would in indicate that they're going to be special for Muzen. So maybe Muzen might end up showing up here soon as they're taking down Gyatoro and, um, and Daki. Either that or Akaza will show up again because he seems like he likes to come in and <laughs> mop up afterwards. Akaza is like the little bottom fear that comes in when, when the battlefield ends and, and just sweeps up the remaining stuff. Which again, like I said, will, will kind of annoy me. Again, I don't really want Tengen to die just because I don't want this Ryder to start establishing a, a pattern. That every time that Tanjiro meets one of these Hashiras, these high-ranking people, they end up dying in a battle. But I, like I said, I do really feel like Akaza showing up would be perfect, honestly. I, 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 I can see Muzen showing up, but I do see Akaza probably showing up. Because we've already established that Muzen is really pushing Akaza. You need to start taking out these people. I told you I want all of these Hashiras dead. I want the entire Demon Slaying Corp dead. And he's. it seems like he's in the area. And so it would make sense that with how much emphasis they're putting on Rengoku falling to Akaza and how much Tengen keeps thinking about Rengoku, this idea that there is this, you know, I'm supposed to take on what you left behind, taking care of these underlings like Tanjiro and stuff, and I can't do that. I'm not as strong as you. He keeps kind of mentioning the idea that he's not as strong as Rengoku. And it showed in this particular episode that that mirror, that almost uh, reflection of Rengoku inside of Tengen. They, all, they both had the same look on their faces in that moment. They, they were both standing proud and with a big old smile. So it kind of, it almost wants to parallel both Tengen and Rengoku. So I can see Akasa coming up and Tengen having to fight uh, Akaza, whether it again establishes this pattern of Akasa coming in and taking out somebody that Tenjiro ends up, you know, meeting, that's to be the question, or if it will be a thing of Tengen getting revenge for Rengoku, or at least Tengen and Tanjiro getting revenge for Rengoku. I think that would be a nice way to finish off the series. Obviously, we've only got three more episodes remaining. I would really find it to be a really solid conclusion if we get that moment of revenge on Akaza before the end of the season. So maybe episode 9 taking out Gyatoro and Daki and then episode 10 fighting Akasa and maybe taking him out by the end of the 11th episode and then maybe Muzen shows up at the very end. That's what I can kind of see happening but like I said three or more episodes to work with I really do hope they have a nice solid ending to this this particular arc. The third eye aspect is really cool though because I really think that Daki and Gyatoro were like super in sync have obviously every one of his sickles going up and hitting Inosuke and Zenitsu and then having like all the belts coming down at the other battlefield like they were like perfectly like one unit, which is kind of what they were indicating with their first kind of summoning was that idea of them being perfectly at match. They're one unit. Again, technically, they both have to be beheaded in order to be taken out. So, And Tenken's fighting style was really awesome as well. I, I like the whole <laughs> extending the blade and holding it by the very tip of it. Really cool. And also seeing technically sound breathing finally, which I, I, I think was very brief. I, I almost felt like they should have had that a little bit longer of a shot, but it was still cool. I really enjoyed it. Again, it's kind of nonstop action that I'm really enjoying, despite, again, these very kind of rushed inserts of dialogue and backstory that's kind of being thrown in there out of nowhere. We also had a random dig at uh, Muichiro and Gyome, which are the monk-looking guy and the long-haired guy. They apparently became Hashiras within two months, so it's kind of an indication at least them having, like, inherent skill, like they were geniuses to start out. <laughs> What's with Zenitsu? It's like, we're at the point now where Zenitsu's talking in his sleep now. <laughs> it's like, just just make him awake cool. I just, just get rid of his awake persona and just, just make him always like that. I mean, do we really have to drag this out? But we'll see. Like I said, we still have technically three episodes left. It's really building up. I cannot wait for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment. Let me know with all the episodes. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon. I'll throw our tips link in the description below. Definitely appreciate it. Everybody does. And y'all take care.